there everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. My name is Rebecca and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a beautiful, really simple one row repeat scarf. Now it can be left as a normal scarf or you can join the ends together to turn it into an infinity scarf. It is completely up to you. So like I say it's a one row repeat so it's good for you even if you're a bit of a beginner but obviously it's also a really great stitch even if you're slightly more advanced as well. So it is like a lacy chevron or a lacy ripple, whatever you'd like to call it. And it works up really beautifully in any yarn but I've used a lovely variegated yarn and I think it looks really, really nice. So I've just left mine flat for the moment because it's not quite finished. But as I say, you can join the ends to turn it into an infinity scarf. So for this one, I'm going to be using the Hobby Universe yarn. And this just says colour number 14. And I'm going to be using a 4mm hook, which is slightly bigger than what it actually recommends. But I just want it to have a nice drape. So I'm going to be using a 4mm instead of a 3.5. But it's completely up to you what yarn you use. You can use absolutely anything and just use whatever recommended hook size it recommends. Okay, so you want to do your foundation chain in multiples of 16. So for this scarf, I'm going to be chaining 48, which I know sounds like a lot for a scarf. However, because it's a chevron pattern, it does pull it together, so it's not the full length, obviously, because with your dips and your peaks, it does shorten up as you work along. So you want to do it in a multiple of 16, so if you wanted to do a blanket then you can. So 16 plus 4 at the end, but like I say, for the scarf I'm doing 48. So yarn over, pull through, it's 1, 2, 3. So if you just do your foundation chain, like I say, I'm doing 48. And then you just need to make sure you remember to add your additional 4 to the end. So we're going to be working treble crochet stitches for the entirety of the project. So remember that is UK terms treble. In US terms these will be your double crochet stitches. So remember if you hear treble and you're used to US terms, do a double. <laughs> okay so we're going to find the fifth chain from the hook. Obviously you never count the one on the hook. So you've got one, two, three, four and five and you're going to treble into that fifth chain. So yarn over, insert into the chain, yarn over and pull up, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Chain one, you're then going to skip the next chain and then you're going to treble into the one after. So skip one and then treble into the next. chain one, skip one, and treble in the next. So ignoring the chains that we skipped at the beginning, we've now got three trebles separated by chain ones. So again, chain one, skip one, and then we're ready to work our first peak. So after you've skipped one, we're going to do all of our stitches into the same chain. So you're going to do treble, chain one, until you've got four trebles into that chain. So treble, chain one, back in that same chain, another treble, chain one, and again, treble, chain one, and one final treble into that chain, chain one. So you've got four trebles all in that same chain. So again, we've chained one, we're going to skip one, and then we're going to work three trebles back down. So skip one, and then treble, chain one, skip one, and then treble, chain one, skip one, and treble. However, when you finish this treble, you're not going to do a chain one. 
So we've got our peak with our four trebles and then we've got one, two, three trebles there separated by a chain one. But you're not going to do a chain one after this final treble because we want to create our dip. So no chaining one and then we're going to skip three chains. So you're going to skip one, two and three. Into that fourth chain you're going to work a treble. So skip three, no chain one and just treble straight into that fourth chain and then we're going to work back up again. So chain one this time, skip one and then treble. So you want your three trebles going back up. So that's two, chain one, skip one and treble. Chain one. So you can see now that has created us a nice dip and then we're ready to create our peak again. So we've done a treble in chain one, skip one and then into the next chain you will do your four trebles separated by chain ones. So one, chain one, back in that same chain, two, chain one, three, chain one, and four chain one, skip one and then we're doing our three trebles back down. So one, chain one, skip one, two trebles, chain one, skip one. And then that final treble in your set of three, you're not going to chain one, you're going to, if you were still working, you would want. So obviously if you had done a wider piece, you would skip three and then treble into the fourth and then work back up again. However, so I've completed my final peak and then my three trebles back down. I haven't chained one after this final treble and I've got three stitches left and I'm going to skip two and work one treble into that very final chain. Okay, so I know it doesn't really look like very much at this point, but obviously the more rows you work up, the more obvious the pattern will become. So you should have plenty of peaks and dips. Okay, so we're going to turn our work. And then I'm just going to work up a treble height stitch. You can chain three if you prefer. However, I like to work this particular method. So I'm going to insert my hook through the hole of that very first stitch where your working end is, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both, and then this stitch here has two vertical sections to it. You want to go behind the one that is closest to where your working end is, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both. So that just gives us a treble height stitch, but it's quite chunky so you don't get a big gap. So you're going to skip this first treble here, you're going to skip the chain one, you're also going to skip the next treble. So you're going to skip treble, chain one and treble and then you're going to do your very first treble into that chain one space. So skip the treble, the chain one and the next treble and then treble into that next chain one space. So this is going to be the start of our three trebles working up towards our peak. So chain one, skip the treble and work a treble into the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the treble and work a treble into the next chain one space. Chain one and then you can see here we are at the centre chain one space from our peak so into this next chain one we're going to work our new peak. So treble chain one and then th that three more times all in that same chain one space. Treble, chain one, treble, chain one and your fourth, treble and chain one. So all of those worked into the middle of the peak from the row below and then again you're going to work down your three trebles. So we've done our chain one, we're going to skip that next treble and then treble in the next chain one space. Chain one, 
skip the treble, treble in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip one, treble and then treble into that chain one space. So that is our three trebles that are separated by a chain one. So we're at the dip again now, so you don't want to do any chains. So we're going to skip quite a big chunk of these stitches. So you're going to skip this treble and this treble and that big space and the next treble and the chain one space and the next treble. So you're skipping all of these stitches. Okay, so you're skipping over four trebles and all of those chain spaces as well. And then you're going to work your next treble into that next chain one space. And then again, you're going to work up to your peak. So chain one, skip the next treble and then treble in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next treble and treble in the next chain one space. So there again is our three trebles working up to the peak, separated by our chain ones. So chain one, and then again we are at the center chain one space from the peak from the row below. So you're going to create your new peak by doing your four trebles separated by chain ones. So treble, chain one, treble, chain one, all in the same space, treble, chain one, treble, chain one. And then again, skip the next treble and we're going to work our three trebles down. So treble in the next chain one space, chain one, treble in the next chain one space, chain one, treble in the next chain one space. But we're not going to chain one this time, we're going to skip a bunch of stitches, so you're going to skip four trebles and the chain spaces. So skip one, two, three, four trebles, and then your next treble goes into that next chain one space. And then again, you're working your three trebles up towards your peak. So if you continue that all the way along, so you can see we're getting much more defined already, and I will meet you towards the end of your row. So I've just completed my final peak and then my three trebles and that final treble, remember you don't do a chain and then we're going to skip the two trebles here and then work into that very final stitch which is those skip chains from the beginning. So you don't want to work it into the top of that end treble, you want to work into the next stitch which will be the top of a chain. So just do a treble, like so, and that is how you should look at this point. And that is the row that you will repeat, but I'm just going to show you that one more time because I know that chevrons and ripples and things can get a little confusing. So you will turn, and then into this very first stitch you will do that treble height stitch that I showed you before. So yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both. Behind that vertical part of your stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both. You're then going to skip the next treble. You're then going to skip the next treble, the chain one and the next treble and work into that next chain one space starting your three trebles up to the peak. So treble chain one, skip the treble and into your next chain one space you'll do a treble, chain one, treble in the next chain one space, chain one and then again you should be at the centre chain one space of your peak and you'll create your new peak with your four trebles all in the same chain one space separated by chain ones. So that's two, chain one, three, chain one, four, and chain one. And then again, you're going to be working down towards your dip. So treble in the next chain one space, chain one, treble in the next chain one space, chain one, 
treble in the next J1 space. So that is our three trebles down towards our dip. And then we're going to skip four trebles on the chain spaces. So you're going to skip one, two, three, and four. And then into your next chain one space, you'll start your three trebles separated by your chain ones all the way back up to the peak. So if you repeat that all the way along, and I will meet you one final time when you get towards the end of your row. Okay, so I've completed my final peak and then my final three trebles working down, but I haven't done my chain one after my final treble. I'm really sorry if you can hear all of that building work going on. I don't know why they're doing that in November. <laughs> it must be freezing. You're then going to skip those final two trebles and then you're going to work your final treble into the top of that very last stitch. So skip the two trebles and work into that very last stitch which will either be the top of a chain three depending what you chose to do or it will be the top of that chunky treble height stitch that we did. So that is how you should be looking at this point and that is the row that you will repeat over and over again until your project is the length that you want it to be. So once you've worked up as many rows as you want, obviously if you're leaving it as a flat scarf then just away you go and add your fringe or some pom-poms or whatever you like. However, if you want to join the ends together to turn it into a looped infinity scarf, obviously when you bring the two ends together they should actually line up your peaks should line up with the dip from your foundation chain if you can see here it should all line up and you'll have the same amount of stitches from one edge to the other so all you would do is join your edges together like so and then literally go along all the way into each stitch so insert your hook and find the corresponding stitch on the other side and literally slip stitch and then again into your next stitch and the corresponding one on the other side and slip stitch and you'll just work that all the way along making sure that your peak lines up with the right space on the other side so if at any point you don't line up and your peaks and dips don't line up like here, like they should do, then just pull it out and just check your stitches. But that is all you would need to do and that will line up perfectly for your infinity scarf. But that is it for the tutorial itself. I really, really hope that you have enjoyed this one and please don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you do make this scarf or if you make anything from my videos, I really do love to see. But I will see you for another tutorial really soon. Bye for now.